Hi guys. So, I was not planning to get on tonight because this is Jay's, you know, power half hour, but he's at work. So, at the last minute, I decided to jump on, threw on some mascara and was like, okay, we're gonna do this. Because I had some stuff that I, that I really wanted to say and I think it's important. And the time is short and the days are evil and we are up against a lot that we don't even see. And as believers, we need to always be on guard. We cannot afford to let our guard down as believers. And I want to focus on something I've been thinking a lot about. The job of the believer and as the Christian, we are supposed to be a regular part of our daily life should be to preach the good news to people, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. These should be parts of our regular daily activities, just like it was for Jesus. Jesus went around preaching, teaching, doing good, healing all that were oppressed to the devil. That's what the Bible says. And oppression can come in the form of sickness. Sickness in your body is literally just sin manifested physically. So it's not anything different. That's why the Bible says that Jesus healed our, he healed us, that by his stripes we were healed. We had to be healed in our physical body because we are so carnal in our nature and our senses rule us, our, our, you know, our five senses rule us. And so we have to be healed physically sometimes in our bodies so that we can believe spiritually. And that's why Jesus said, you will not believe unless you see the miracles. And it was true because he knew he was talking to a carnal human person who will not understand the things of God unless they see a miracle. So as believers, we're supposed to be mini Jesuses going around, healing people, delivering people from demons. Um, these should not be weird things. These should, these should not be things for only certain Christians or things that people do that have a certain anointing. We should all be laying hands on the sick. We should all be casting out demons. Why? Because we are born again. We have been given a new, brand new spirit. And, and we have the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. If you could really just get the revelation of that, it's not about you as a person, how amazing you are or how awful you are. It's that as a new creation and a believer and as the, as the, physical body of Christ here on earth it is our job to go around doing the things that Jesus said did and this is why he said you will do the things that I do but greater things you will also do that's what Jesus said and that used to bother me a lot but right now I'm reading a book that is extremely amazing if you want the title of it I'll tell you you can I'll put it in the comments but um the greater things that we now do as a believer, it, yes, it said, he said, you'll do these things that we do. So we will heal the sick. We will cast out demons like Jesus did. But the greater thing is that now we have the, we can also, in addition, offer the gift of salvation. Jesus at that point when he said that had not yet died and he had not yet risen from the dead, he had not conquered the grave. So he was not yet able to give people the gift of salvation. People were saved uh, basically with like a promissory note. That's why the Bible, Paul tells us he went back and led captivity captive, held captivity captive. So he went to the people that were waiting, that were um, waiting to be redeemed. And, and um, he saved them after he rose from the dead. So he, he led captivity captive. I think that's in, well, regardless, but he expects us to do the same things. So as believers, it's our job to be healing the sick, be casting out demons, be preaching the good news to people. We are a living testimony. The things that we do, other people are watching as Christians. And I want to just quickly go over this tonight because I just see so much, like it is, as a believer, you are representing who Jesus is everywhere you go. 
everything you do, everything you say, the words that you speak, the things that you um, watch and people see you doing. I mean, all of these things, you are a living example of what Christianity looks like. And no wonder so few people want to become Christians because they see Christians acting just like the world, drinking, cursing, um, fornicating, uh, all of these things that are not things that should be in the life of a Christian. And, and, and then we celebrate these things. The Christians celebrate these things too. It's just like, it's crazy to me. And so as believers, we're setting a terrible example and we shouldn't be, what we should be doing is actually going out and setting people free. But what we are actually doing is putting them more in bondage because they're following us. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So we now have to say that same thing. Follow me as I follow Christ. The things that I'm doing as a believer, they should also be doing. That's what Paul was saying. Do what I do. And so as believers, we should be saying the same things. We should be able to say the same thing. But if we're cursing and drinking and fornicating and, and doing all the things that the world does, we cannot say that. So that's the first thing. Um, people don't. Like they think it's some crazy, like, wow, amazing thing to, to cast out a demon or to heal the sick. And it should be totally normal. We need to normalize biblical Christianity. And I've seen recently, and somebody sent me a message today actually asking about this. Um, some TikTok preacher talking about um, Jesus. His name wasn't Jesus. Like, his name really isn't Jesus. Okay, like, I, I want to address this because I know that now with TikTok and, you know, the reels on Instagram and the Facebook, whatever they call them on Facebook, there are a lot of people going on social media and making themselves preachers and teachers and they're self-proclaimed ministers. They have no congregations. They're not submitted to anybody they don't they don't have a pastor themselves they don't have a church they don't do ministry at all they're just random people who decided they want to have an opinion and they're very confident so they go on the internet and they seem like they know what they're talking about and they're saying ridiculous things that are leading people astray that are not producing fruit in anybody's life and the problem with watching somebody on tiktok and the problem with watching a reel and getting your theology from it is you don't know that person and you cannot see their fruit and the Bible says we'll know them by their fruit. So if you are, you have never met the person, even me, don't listen to me without checking my fruit. You know, check my fruit. But I, I, I ask you to do that. And that's the thing. We, we all as Christians, we need to be an open book. If, if somebody has a problem, if we have a problem, we should go to another believer with the problem. That's the biblical thing to do. That's what the Bible says to do is to go to the person. But we are listening to people on TikTok and on social media who have no qualifications to be in any type of ministry or leading any type of people. One of these videos that, I, that someone sent me, the point they were making was whatever stupid, but he's dropping the F-bomb the whole time. And this is somebody who's supposed to be preaching. Like, are you kidding me? You're dropping the F-bomb while you're supposedly trying to preach a message to convince people of your theology like is that i can tell you that guy's fruit's rotten he obviously doesn't read the bible because he's sitting here cursing trying to explain the bible like this is the thing people's fruit becomes obvious it becomes very obvious when you're dropping the f-bomb in the middle of a, of a tiktok video that you're trying to preach the gospel and you are a joke in my book and i'm going to laugh at you not only that, but there was nothing beneficial that came from anything that he was saying. And I'm sorry that I'm talking fast, but I really just, I got to get this point across. And sadly, people don't have an attention span because of TikTok, TikTok videos. So I have to keep it going. Um, the reason I brought up witchcraft in the title of this is because um, that's what a lot of this social media stuff is. Uh, there's a lot of sorcery and witchcraft, um, witchcraft weaved into the agenda of social media. And anybody can put anything on the internet. 
and um, as you all know, and especially a lot of new age things, trendy things that are spiritual that people will say, try this or do this. And guess what? They try this, they do this, they do see a result because it's demonic. And I will tell you that following Jesus and following the Bible is not like watching a TikTok video. It's going to take more than 15 seconds. It's going to require perseverance. It is not going to be a one size fix, fits all or a super quick resolution. It's going to take some time. It's We have to build our faith. We have to constantly work on getting rid of the things that are holding us back. Um, and I wanted to bring up one verse. It's in 1 Samuel 15, 23. And it says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion. And I bring that up because we live in a culture that is extremely rebellious. They do not understand submitting to authority. Forget biblical authority. They don't even submit to anybody. Nobody. And um, we're raising a generation of children with this gentle parenting ridiculousness that um, we're just, we're just, it, it's going to be a nightmare, a nightmare. If you're, it, you can't, we're raising a rebellious generation who doesn't respect authority. There, there is no way that that can end well. And some of us wonder why our kids are brats. Well, your kid might be a brat because you were a rebellious brat growing up. You were rebellious towards your parents. You still have a rebellious attitude towards your parents, even though maybe you're not having to live under their, their, um, their roof anymore. Your overall mentality is very rebellious. You do what you want. So you think that your kid is not going to be rebellious? No, I've said this a million times and I'll say it again. Whatever issues you have that you do not deal with, your kids are going to have to deal with those issues. You're passing them down to the next generation. So if you were a rebellious little brat growing up and you still have not learned how to submit to authority and you still don't listen to anybody when they tell you anything and you still cannot submit and you still cannot humble yourself, guess what? Your kid is now going to take on that persona. And I don't care how much you discipline them. I don't care how much you tell them. Do as I say, not as I do. That will not work. If you don't break down your own rebellious attitude that you've had your whole life then and humble yourself, then you cannot expect your child to do the same thing. They won't. They will not. So if, if you're like caught in this misery of my kid is a brat, well, that's because you're a brat. <laughs> And, you know, I'm just telling you direct tonight because I know that some people want to be free and they want to hear the truth. But there are other people who just want to be a victim. There are other people who want to come with a problem. They, they have all these issues. They want to come to you asking for solutions. And then when you give them the solution, they don't like what you say. They get defensive. They get angry. They start flipping the script. Well, you this and you that. Then don't come to me for advice. I don't, that's fine. What do I gain by you listening to my advice? Nothing. I don't care if you listen to my advice or not. How is that working for you? How is the way that you're doing things working for you? It obviously isn't because if it was working for you, you would not be asking people for help and advice. But I can tell you it is working for me. So if it's working for me, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. And this is the thing. People, it's about any issue. It could be about alcohol. I don't drink. So people that have all these issues, they come to me, they say this and that, and you say, well, alcohol is numbing your pain. It's kicking the can down the road. It's making your problems bigger. It's not making them go away. You need to quit drinking. Well, I think it's okay to have a glass of wine here and there. The Bible's not against that. Have your wine have your wine. I don't care. I'm telling you what's worked for me. If you want to drink your wine and wine, because that's what you do, they go together. You whine and you whine and you whine and cry because you're the victim all the time. And, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling you that keep your wine, but I don't want to hear you whine anymore. Go whine to somebody else. So rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And that's scary because, you know, and, and this, I encourage you to read First Samuel, all of it. But, you know, God originally picked 
Saul to be king of Israel. And because he was not 100% obedient to the commands that God gave him, God said, nope. And he tried to justify when he was disobedient. He said, well, I killed all, God told him to kill everyone, all the people, all the animals, all the everything in battle. And he didn't, he kept some of the nicer stuff and the nicer cattle and the nicer. And, and so when he was confronted with this, he was like, well, I kept the nice things to sacrifice to God and the people and then blamed it on the people and all this. And God said, nope, I'm done. He wants obedience, not sacrifice. That's what God said. He wants obedience. That's what he wants. He wants us to be obedient to the word of God. Doing all of these good works in order to make up for your rebellion then you're operating in witchcraft, according to this, and and God does not want your sacrifices. He wants your obedience, obedience to the word. And the word is very clear on so many, on every issue. It's very clear on the way a Christian should live. And we, as believers, need to be setting the bar very, very high. We need to be submitting to one another humbly, even when we don't like what we hear. And this takes practice and it's not comfortable humbling yourself when somebody tells you something. But you know what? I would rather somebody tell me like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but right now I'm just not ready to do that. I understand that you might be right, and but I don't really like it. It doesn't feel good, so I need to sit with it for a little bit. Instead of what the what people actually do, which is they get super defensive, they get super angry, they start then flipping the script, like I said, start attacking you about things that are completely unrelated because they're trying to get the heat off of them. So, yeah, we need to we need to get to a point where. We are able to humbly receive correction from other believers, that we are not getting defensive, that our first reaction is not to put up our defense, but our first reaction is to say, okay, I don't, I might be mad that you even are telling me this, but I'm just going to think about it. I'm just going to let it marinate. And I don't, I don't really feel good about that right now. And I don't really agree right now, but... I'm going to just think about what you said. Why can't we just get to that point? Why can't we just be at the point where instead of being defensive and angry, see, because to me, the number one proof that you're wrong is when you automatically get super defensive. That's usually, because if, you, if you're not wrong, you're going to be like, you might be surprised, but you're going to sit there and think about it. And you're going to be like, if you're, if you have a humble heart, you're going to be like, Am I doing that? Is that true? Am I really? Like, that's what we need to be doing. We need to be actually evaluating when somebody's saying something, especially if it's somebody we love and respect. Please understand, don't listen to everything everybody tells you, but if somebody that you love and respect and they have the fruit working in their life is telling you something, then you would be wise to listen and to not all of a sudden become a victim that, oh, they're attacking you and now I have to defend myself. That That's not wise. So if, if, if you're in a place where you need some changes in your life and somebody's telling you something and you don't want to hear it because it does not feel good and you disagree, well, that is exactly why you need to change it because it's a stronghold in your life. And rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So your rebellious attitude is the same as practicing witchcraft. That's what the Bible says. I didn't say it. Go read it yourself. And and we cannot be engaged in witchcraft. We need to be setting people free from de demons. You know, we need to be setting people. We need to. And we, you know, I've seen people. I've prayed for people to be delivered of, of demons. In prison. When we were in India, we had a girl throw down insanely getting delivered. The demon was talking. She was throwing up. She was convulsing. She was screaming. This girl was getting delivered. And she is doing a, a, a amazing now. But we can't do that as believers. We can't help people and deliver people of demons when we ourselves are entertaining them with our own rebellion and with our own 
um, resistance towards giving up certain sins that God is calling us to a higher place. He's calling us to a higher standard. He's calling us to more. He's calling us to bigger, to better. He does not want us to sit in our little issues and problems and our pathetic little lives like this. We should be an example, a city set on a hill. Like, does this mean we won't have issues? No. Does it mean we won't have problems? No. I've had so many problems. Things that I thought could have killed me, problems. And, you know, but yet God's faithful and he's delivered me from everything. And he's, he's, he's given me um, an incredible life where even regardless of all the things that I've been through and, and losing my husband and the kid's dad and all the things that happened afterwards. And then our baby after he was born almost dying and doctors saying that he wasn't going to make it. And, and if he did, he was going to have severe um, physical disabilities and mental disabilities. And then us standing on the word of God and saying, no, we resist those lies. We are not going to accept that. Our son is going to be perfect. And guess what? The doctors, they're puzzled. Last visit, every time we take him. There's no explanation for your son. He's a miracle. The doctor literally said the last two times we were there, your son is a miracle. You don't get those kinds of results when you're dabbling with the things of this world. You can't have it both ways. If you want to be rebellious and you want to operate the way you want to operate according to your own, the Bible says in uh, that the Israelites, everybody did what was right in their own hearts. And we all know they got stuck in the wilderness. They did not go to the promised land because everybody did what was right in their own hearts. And to God, this was an abomination because we cannot do what's right in our own heart. Everybody has a different standard of what's right and wrong. We need to be following the word of God and the Holy Spirit. If we're in the word, then the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance in the right moment, the things that we need to know for that moment. It works, all of it works together. The Holy Spirit works with the word and, and, and the word is Jesus and Jesus is his name, regardless of those stupid TikTok videos. You guys, please, please don't even watch those things. Don't even watch TikTok videos with people that you've never met who are dropping the F-bomb. Turn it off. It's garbage. If you need somebody good to listen to, or if you need somebody good to watch, or if you, you want some good material, come here on Thursday nights and listen to Jay and I. We're preaching stuff right from the word, first of all. Or if you want a really good book, I'll show you. I'm reading this book right now. What happened from the cross to the throne, E.W. Kenyon. He's born in the 1800s. Sadly, you have to go back to like the 1800s to find anything decent. But you know what? It is life-changing. Read people who have good fruit, people who are healing the sick, people who are delivering people from demons, people who do have abundant lives, not people who are a mess. A mess doesn't mean we won't have problems. Like I said, you guys, I've had more than my fair share of problems and I've made my fair share of mistakes too. Don't get me wrong. But if it weren't for being grounded in the word, those mistakes would have killed me. They would have killed my son when he was really sick as a newborn. So we have to stay grounded. Yes, we will fall. Yes, we will have moments of failure. Yes, we will have moments where we want to have a pity party. And Jay talked about this last a pity party. We have to be realizing that we are not a victim. We are overcomers because of what Jesus did. We have the same power in us that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus took all of Satan's authority. Satan does not have any authority, not over anything. The only authority that he has is what you give him. If you give him authority over your body, if you give him authority over your finances, if you give him authority over your children, he is going to take that and run with it. You have to stand up and say, no more. I'm not living like this anymore. I'm not going to be a victim anymore. If I have to cry by myself and scream into a pillow, I'll do it for a second. But then I'm going to pick myself up. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to choose solutions, not sympathy. Oh, 
if that that in itself i could preach on that for days stop looking for sympathy stop looking for sympathy jesus died to give you power not to give you sympathy it's time that we start utilizing the power that he gave us not to just set ourselves free from our own issues and our children free from their issues but to set other people free to stop being rebellious towards people in authority over us and to stop being rebellious to the word of God that's so clear about the way we should be living. So I just want to encourage you with that. And if you're in a place tonight where you're like, I have some demons and I need to get rid of them. I know I have demons. I hear them. They talk to me. They whisper things to me. They they run my life. I feel like I have another power that controls me I feel like I lose control over myself I feel like I can't concentrate I feel weird things in my body I feel I have pain in my body even pain can be a demon that's why Jesus when the woman was bent over for 18 years he told her to be healed and he told her to be delivered she had a demon and it was demonic she needed to be healed but it was a demon that was making her sick so sometimes it's demons that are making us sick. If that's you and you're like, you know what? Yes, that's me. I need prayer. I'm going to pray for you right now. If you need healing, if you need deliverance, whatever it is, I'm going to pray for you. You can receive it right now. And you know what? This can be the fruit. If you want to test, okay, is this legit? Is this good fruit? Is this a good message that I'm listening to? Or is this one of these crazy TikTok preachers claiming that Jesus is not his name? If you want proof... I'm going to pray for you right now on this live. You're going to see a difference in your body. You're going to be delivered. And then you're going to know, okay, this is the truth. And it's not the truth because I said it. It's the truth because it's the word of God. It's what he told us to do. And if we're, if we're preaching anything other than the word of God, Jesus said that he would confirm our words with signs that follow. He's not confirming those people on TikTok's words with signs that follow. Those a lot of those signs that follow, they're demonic signs. And they will not bring peace. They will not bring love, joy, none of those things. They will bring more bondage. Okay? So if, if you need prayer tonight for healing, if you need prayer for deliverance, you got some demons you need to get rid of, um, I'm going to pray for you right now. You're going to be free from that stuff. And I want to hear about it. I want you guys to comment. I want you guys to message me. I want you to, the Bible says that we overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So the blood of the lamb is Jesus. We know that he gave his blood as a sacrifice for us. And the word of our testimony is testifying. Satan hates a testimony because it's proof that Jesus is real. He hates that. So we have to be we have to throw that in his face at every opportunity. I talk about Jude being healed when he was a newborn at every chance I get because God did that. And, it, and, and it's, 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 it's medically proven by the doctors that my son is a miracle. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that every chance I get. Okay? So if you need that healing, you need that deliverance right now, I'm going to pray for you. So Jesus, I just thank you for everybody that's watching. I thank you for everybody who is going to be watching. And first and foremost, I, I pray for, I'm, I'm going to pray for everybody who needs healing first. So I pray for all of those people that are watching right now that have sickness or disease, infirmity in their body, and I take authority over that sickness and disease and command it to leave their body right now in the name of Jesus. That pain goes it leaves their body right now in the name of jesus sickness and infirmity you have no right there we command you to get out in the name of jesus we thank you for this we thank you that your word says that by your stripes we are healed you died and paid for it and so it's our job to receive it so we just thank you for it right now god we thank you that you even right now i feel it that you are working through people's bodies right now even as we speak as we speak, pain is leaving. Thank you, Jesus. We just take authority over every demonic activity that is harassing anybody who's watching this video right now. Any demon, we call you out right now and we tell you to leave them alone right now in the name of Jesus. Get out. Get out. Get out. You have no right to be there in Jesus' name. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. 
And yes, we might feel stupid watching a screen. Yes, it may feel dumb praying to a screen, but it does not matter because there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. His name is Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you that Jesus is Lord. We thank you that he finished it. He did the work. And so right now, just receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I want to hear your testimonies. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you guys for reaching out with your questions. Um, it gives me an idea of the stuff that people are dealing with, that people are struggling with. And um, it really just adds fuel to the fire, ultimately. And if you're tired of walking around as a victim in defeat, then you need to get in the word. You need to be willing to accept correction. You need to be humble. And you need to be realizing that everything in the word is going to come as a result of discipline and perseverance. It is not going to happen in a 15 second TikTok video. So if you guys are looking for good content, if you're lo looking for things to watch, things to listen to, I know that I'm going to hear testimonies from tonight from praying for people. I, I, I'm confident in that I felt the anointing while I was praying. Um, and this needs to be a part of all of our everyday life. You guys need to be doing these. You need to be praying for people the same way I just prayed. You have the same authority I have. If you are born again, I don't have any more authority than you. You have the same authority. So you need to be doing it. You need to be taking authority over the devil. You need to be taking authority over your thoughts. You need to be, need to be taking authority over your body. This is ridiculous. It's time for you to step out and start doing what God's called you to do instead of wallowing around in your misery. That is why Jesus came to set you free so that you would stop wallowing around in your misery and you could get up and do something for the kingdom. So it is not okay for you to be a victim anymore. You need to start choosing solutions, not sympathy. You can't have both. It's one or the other, you pick. And I chose a long time ago that I wasn't going to choose sympathy. Because trust me, I could get it. Poor me, the widow. Oh, I have two children. Trust me, if I wanted sympathy, I could go crying every single day on Facebook and I'd get plenty of it. I don't want that. I want solutions. And God's redeemed my life because of that. So thank you guys. Please send me your testimonies. If, you, if I prayed for you and you received something, please let me know. That's a testimony. You overcome Satan that way. Okay? God bless you guys. Tune back in live next Thursday at 7 p.m. Jay will be here. He was at work tonight. He'll, he misses you guys. I took over his thing and uh, he had a video he wanted to post. It wasn't live, but I'm sure he'll do that. So um, love you guys. You guys have a great week and I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Bye.